Okay, so in the previous video, I went through the list of identities and I also reviewed these different techniques. These techniques you should have in front of you as you're working through these problems and as you first see a problem, you should be thinking about which one of these techniques do we want to apply to this problem. Now in this case, the first technique is change everything into sines and cosines and that technique is not going to apply here because everything is already written out in terms of sines and cosines. So because of that, if I can't apply that, that first technique, then I would want to move on and try one of the other techniques instead. So the next one on the list is use factoring to simplify the expression if possible. That's something I can do with this one. I can factor this. So for this one, I notice that there's a difference of squares on top there. So I'm going to go ahead and use my difference of squares factoring technique in order to take care of that. So this is going to be sine squared minus cosine squared. Is this going to be sine squared plus cosine squared? So I have that on the bottom. I have cosine theta minus sine theta. And the other side, I haven't done anything with, with this yet. So I'm going to just rewrite the right-hand side and carry that down all the way. Now, as you're working through the problem, if you see any special identity come up, you want to go ahead and apply that identity to this problem. So you may not recognize this right away. It may take you a little while working through these problems until you get to the point where you can quickly identify the identity. But this one, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, that comes up quite often. So if you see that come up uh, anywhere, you want to go ahead and apply the identity right away for it. So I know that from my list of identities right here, I know that this is equal to a one. So this whole thing, uh, I can replace this whole expression with a one. So because of that, when I come down to the next step, it would look like this, sine squared minus cosine squared. And on the bottom I have cosine theta minus sine theta. Now the reason why this is gone is because I really have all this is being multiplied by one. So one times anything is gonna be itself. So that's why in this step right here, I don't, I, I still have the right hand side, but I don't have anything left on I don't have this whole thing is already going to be gone. So again, all this multiplied by 1 is itself. That's why you don't see that written there anymore. So I've taken care of that. And so once I've applied the identity, you keep looking back at your techniques again to see if you have another one you can apply here. Well, this is still something that I can do a factoring step with. So I'm going to do difference of squares once again. So sine theta plus cosine theta. And then sine theta minus cosine theta. And the bottom I have cosine theta minus sine theta. I'm still, notice that every single step, what I'm doing is I'm carrying down the right hand side. That's the proper technique when you're doing that. You're, you're writing this down all the way down and each step takes you closer and closer to having both sides equal. So you're going to carry that down all the way until you get one side equal to the other side. Now what I notice here is I have sine minus cosine and cosine minus sine. Uh, there's a rule from algebra that says that if you have the same thing on top and the same thing on the bottom except that the order is reversed, you have a minus sign there, you're actually allowed to cancel those out. However, that's going to leave you with a negative one. The rule, the actual rule is this one I'll write here, a minus b over b minus a. If that, can, if you, that whole thing cancels out and uh, simplify down to negative one. So anytime you see that happening, this minus this, the same thing, order reversed, you can automatically cancel it out and put a negative one. So therefore, now I have a negative I'll put out front here, and I have sine theta plus cosine theta, and on this side, I've got this one. So now I have actually both sides are equal now because sine plus cosine is the same as cosine plus sine. They both have the negative sign in front of it. So therefore, I've shown now that one side equals the other. I've taken us down from here all the way down to here, and again, the, uh, all this work right here is going to be your answer. You're trying to show how you get from here down to there. If you did the first couple steps and maybe you got down to here and then didn't know what else to do next, and all of a sudden magically we come down here and both sides are equal, that's not going to be good enough to show that, you've, that you show both sides are going to be uh, equal. So that depending on which teacher you have, most teachers will require you to show more work on this one, definitely I would want you to show more work. So if you get down to this point, a lot of times what happens is people guess and don't know and that's like, well, I'll just jump down to here and show both sides are equal. Again, you gotta show some kind of steps inside there to be able to get the full credit. 
because then that would really then that way you're really showing that you know how to get from here all the way down to there.